The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship at Kennewick First Presbyterian. I'm Reverend Hannah Peterson Shearer, and if you are visiting us for the first time, this is not our normal routine. <laughs> but once a year, we have our annual congregational meeting, and so you are welcome, welcome on this day, especially as we do some of the business part of the work of the church. So, I'm going to give you the announcements. And then we will call our congregational meeting to order. I have a couple of um, extra things. One of them is a shout out for Barb Grasher, who is retiring at the end of this month from her position as financial secretary. Yes. I don't think she's here today, though. Said she's not even here. So you have to tell her when you see her. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, she served as a backup for Claudia Franklin and then took on the position full time after Claudia resigned due to her health issues. For the last few years, Barb has done the job and on her own until Avis Ogden started helping her a year ago. Barb and her husband, Alan, are retired and enjoy traveling and taking care of grandkids. And now they can focus on those activities full time. So thank you, Barb, for a job well done. And thank you, Avis, for taking on the position. I'm about to sneeze. Or maybe not. Okay. On the back of your bulletin today, you will find the announcements. So take some time and look through those um, and see if there's any events that you would like to participate in. We're going to start our morning with our congregational meeting. Then we will suspend the meeting. The purpose for that is so that we can nominate and elect the remaining elders and deacons who then will be installed and ordained in our worship service. So if we n elect them first, then we can have them prayed over with all of us here together, and then we will um, continue the meeting in the First Pres Center after we have our worship service. So that's the plan of the day. Are there any announcements that maybe we have missed that are not? Yes, Gina. Security code changing February 16th because of the holiday. The security code for our... Um, security system here is going to change on February 16th. So if you have a key and you need to get in and would like to know how to turn off the alarm, you should call the office so that you can do that. And we have you on the list and that way we know who's supposed to be on that list with our keys and all of that. But it's really um, not very tight security if you have the same code forever. So that's what's going on there. Any other announcements. Would you take a moment this morning uh, and sign the friendship pads? You'll find those red pads in your pews and we can share those across the aisle as well. Let us call our congregational meeting to order with prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift that it is to be your people. We thank you for the gift of this church May we love and serve you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Lord, as we do the business of the church, may we be ever attuned to the work of your Holy Spirit, that we may know what your heart desires for us, and we may walk in your will. It's in Jesus' precious name, that head of the church, that we pray. Amen. I have been informed that we have a quorum. Where is Sylvia? There you are. Thank you. Do we have a motion that the congregational mean, meeting be concurrent with the corporation meeting? Thank you. Do we have a second? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Gina Mabry, would you come, please, and share the fruits of your hard labor with all of us this morning? We want to thank the Congregational Nominating Committee who have served tirelessly, um, Gina and Sharon Hauck, Tim, Tom Callahan, Gail Foster for deacons. The congregation at large was Carol Adamek, Rick Parsons, Larry Towner, and Karen Wilcox. So thank you for all of your hard work. And if you're interested in taking on that job, uh, we will be taking nominations at lunch. So, you know, we're going to feed you first butter you up a little bit, but it is a blessing 
to be able to be a part of the nominating committee because you really need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is doing for the church. And if you're interested in serving, you need to talk to people and let them know that that's where your heart is and where God is leading you. So thank you, Gina. Good morning. The nominating committee would like to um, put a motion to um, elect Tom Westerman as elder for class of 2019 and Brenda Pellifin and Pat Patricia Fisher as deacons. Thank you. Do we have a second? Do we have any other nominations from the floor? All those in favor of receiving this slate of nominations for elder and deacon, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Well done. As is our practice, we have the necrology report printed. I figured because we're here in worship that it would be nice to hear the names. And I've asked uh, Steve if he will ring a bell for us. Um, so we'll take a moment right now as we remember those who have gone in this year and joined the church triumphant. Eula DeWitts. John White. Sarah Hopkins. Jacob Christensen. Judith Schnell. Betty Jane Roop. Mildred Sloan. Bill Thomas. Max Sloan. Dwayne Fountain. Pat Soderquist. Jim Petit Mermet. Elaine Kuchkow Sr. Jordan Krabilski. Ross Bartholomew. Bob Gore. Barbara Hayes. And Judy Homewood. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the lives represented on this list, for the ways that these people have shaped us as believers, we thank you for the ways that we can be the church here on this earth and be reunited in the church that is to come. Amen. Yay. Elder Mark Benneke is going to come, there he is, and share with us the news about personnel committee and the things that they have done and neither of our interns are here this morning, but that's okay. We'll pray over them anyway. <laughs> After many months of searching for a youth director for our church, I'm excited and proud to announce that Stephen Janssens is going to serve in that capacity. Stephen, would you stand up, please? <laughs> Thank you. Stephen comes to us by way of uh, teaching at uh, Chihuahua High School. And because of, of his teaching commitment, uh, he's working for us part time. But we think we have our hooks in him. And he certainly has his hooks in us because uh, he's met with the kids a number of times. And uh, what a great connection is already evident. Uh, we just really thank God for bringing you to us in a, to fill out what we need to uh, support our youth. We've also hired Cheyenne Cutts and Zach Lucky, part-time interns to help us primarily with the young believers, the middle school age kids. 
Stephen is focusing on the high school age kids at this point, but both Stephen, uh, not both, but uh, Stephen and Cheyenne and Zach are working with a group of volunteers that continue to support the high school and middle school kids as well. And I just pray that you hold them up in your prayers to bring the kids ever closer to Jesus. Thank you, Stephen, for joining us. Thank you, Mark. We, during our time with children, are going to have you come up and you have to talk to us a tiny bit, Stephen. You know, if I told you ahead of time, you might have been scared. <laughs> Do we have a motion to suspend the congregational meeting at this point so that we can continue in worship and reconvene following worship? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. I'd invite you now to join with me in our responsive call to worship. In the sanctuary, God the Holy One, whose glory fills the whole earth, calls us. We respond with our whole heart, singing God's praise and giving thanks. Amen. Will you please stand as we sing our opening song, Holy is the Lord. We stand and lift up our hands, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now, how great, how awesome is He. Together yeah, we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now, how great, how awesome is He. Together we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up. All around is the anthem of the Lord's renown. Together we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. Will you join me in our prayer of confession printed in your bulletin this morning? God of the universe and creator of all that is, we admit that we often fail to be honest about our lives. Sometimes we are deceitful, other times we judge ourselves harshly and feel unworthy of your call on our lives. Touch us with your grace 
and dispel our fear that we may arise with renewed spirits to serve you, our true sovereign. Amen. Will you take a moment of silent confession? Lord, you know the chaos in our lives that is all around us and sometimes that we create. Forgive us. Restore us with peace that passes understanding. But trust and faith that you are the God who provides, who guides and walks alongside us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, Jesus Christ has gone to the cross to forgive us of our sins and has risen from the dead so that we too may rise to new life in him, that we are no longer punished, we are forgiven, we are freed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Will you stand and pass the peace of Christ to one another this morning? Peace be with you.
Scripture reading comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now, kids, I'm going to have you come down here for our time with children in just a couple seconds. So pay attention, because I'm going to ask you a question about this. So listen. 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. The boy, Samuel, ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am, and he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the kids to come down, and we're going to visit, and I also want Stephen and your lovely bride, come on down. Here we are. Okay. So, who was our story about? Samuel, Samuel that's right, you were listening. Come, come sit with me. You're going to meet some new people here. All right, this is Stephen. He's going to be our new youth director. And this is his wife, and I forgot your name. Dara. Dara. And she is going to be the supporter of the youth director because he needs lots of prayer <laughs> and encouragement in this job. Now, when we read this story about Samuel, was he a grown up? He was just a boy. It says that he was a little boy. And when somebody started hollering, Samuel, Samuel, he went to the guy who was his teacher. He went to Eli. Eli was raising him and teaching him how to be a priest and what he needed to do to serve God in the temple. And so he went to Eli, but was it Eli calling him? No, and Eli was probably getting really annoyed because it was nighttime and he was tired and he wanted to sleep and he couldn't see very well. And you know, old people get cranky sometimes, don't I? especially in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, mostly it's Paul, I know, that wakes me up, it's okay. But here he is, like, going and talking to Eli, and finally Eli says, wait a minute. God's talking to this boy. He needs to listen. So sometimes God talks to grown-ups, and sometimes God talks to kids. And when God talks to you, you should listen and say, Lord, what do you want me to hear? Because I'm listening. Now, God calls us to do different things. And right now, Stephen has been called by God and by us to lead our youth group. And we want to pray for him. We also want to pray for Zach and Cheyenne because they're going to help with our youth group too. They're going to help with the YBs. They're going to help with the high school. And I bet they'll help with your programs too sometimes. They're going to help out in vacation Bible school and stuff like that because God wants them to serve him by loving you. Pretty awesome, huh? 
So what should you do to help them do that? You should be good and listen to them, but also pray. Pray for them. So that's what we're going to do right now. Are you ready? Okay, I want you to come around here and, like, touch Stephen on his arm or maybe his foot. Okay, can you come over here? Or Dara, you can touch her too. There we go. Come on. Laying on of hands is a very ancient tradition that it means we are bestowing blessings and love and God's grace upon you. So it's okay. One finger is good enough. <laughs> and if you can't reach, just kind of go like that. Here we go. Repeat after me. Thank you, God, for calling Stephen and Zach and Cheyenne to serve you here. Help us to learn from them, to love them, and care for them as they serve us by serving you. Bless Dara and give her your presence and lots of words of wisdom and help Stephen to keep listening to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job, guys. You can go to children's worship. Thank you so much for doing that. I know it was a little awkward. Appreciate you.
Amen. Sometimes we don't need to be the frozen chosen, you know? <laughs> well, we have recently begun a new sermon series called Remarkable. And in this series, we're taking a deep dive into the Gospel of Mark. This week, we're in Mark chapter 3. And the verses I'll be reading from throughout my sermon this morning are verses 13 through 19. In these verses... Mark recounts the calling of the twelve, the twelve who will soon be known as apostles. And so these seemed like good verses to preach on, on a morning in which we're ordaining and installing our new elders and deacons. The passage begins like this in verse 13. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. I'm going to stop right here for just a moment to point out that in the Gospel of Mark, mountains are often sites of divine revelation, just as they are in the Old Testament. And significant moments and turning points in Jesus' ministry tend to occur up on a mountain. In Mark's Gospel, this is actually the first of four occasions in Jesus' ministry that occurs on a mountainside, and the location is not accidental. It's meant to convey that Jesus' calling of the twelve is not simply a human act. God's will is involved. And so is prayer. Although Mark doesn't specifically mention Jesus praying in this passage. But Luke does, in his parallel account of the calling of the Twelve in Luke chapter 6. So I think it's safe to infer that Jesus spent some time in prayer, maybe even a lot of time in prayer, up on that mountainside. Jesus spent time in prayer on the mountain, and then according to Mark, he called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. No congregational nominating committee is involved. Sorry, Gina. I know that breaks your heart. No long list of names and phone numbers. No job descriptions outlining the role of an apostle. No gentle pleading from Jesus to prayerfully consider serving the people of God in this way. Jesus simply calls those he wants, and they come to him. You get the sense that the twelve don't so much decide to follow Jesus, as much as Jesus, the sovereign Lord, summons them to him. So picking up in verse 14, I'll be reading from 14 and 15 now. Mark writes, Jesus appointed twelve, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. The word translated a point in verse 14 in the Greek literally means made. Jesus made 12. And that word can be translated named or chose, pointed, or ordained. And in certain ancient manuscripts of this passage, it adds that Jesus designated them or named them apostles. So what's an apostle? Over the centuries, it's come to mean some things that perhaps it didn't mean at the very beginning. But at its most basic, an apostle is an emissary, a messenger, a representative who is sent on behalf of another. So Jesus calls the twelve to be his apostles, his representatives, people who are sent out to proclaim the good news and to carry on the work that Jesus has already begun. But there's a very, very important aspect of their call that we dare not overlook, and it is so easy to overlook it. 
And that is their first and primary call to be with Jesus. Mark says, Jesus appointed 12 that they might be with him. Dr. Jim Edwards was our memorial lecture series speaker in 2017. And he says this, discipleship is a relationship before it is a task. A who before a what. And therefore, apostleship is first a matter of being, and then secondarily of being sent. Who we are in relationship to Jesus precedes what we do as a result of that relationship. And we forget this too often, I think. We forget that what we do for Jesus depends upon who we are in him. It depends upon our relationship with him. If in our service to Jesus, or if in what we assume is our service to Jesus, we fail to grow in our relationship with Jesus, we've missed the mark. And then we have to ask ourselves if our service is simply anxious striving or mere busyness. And elders and deacons, I want you especially to remember that relationship is primary. Tasks are secondary. Jesus calls his disciples first to be with him. There's a second purpose to their call, and it's a twofold purpose to preach, which is to proclaim or speak the good news, and to have authority to drive out demons. Jesus drives out a number of demons in Mark's gospel, and in this passage, he calls his apostles to do the same, but it's an interesting task, an interesting call, and we need to consider what Mark might mean by this. And while we don't have time to go into all the possibilities, all the nuances of what this means, I want you to keep this in mind. In Mark's gospel, driving out demons or exorcising demons is used almost synonymously with healing. It's kind of interesting. So when you hear about Jesus driving out a demon, think healing. Also think opposing evil, things that are not good and not of God. Driving out demons has something to do with that as well. So at the very least, Jesus calls his disciples to do four things. To be with him, which is relational. To preach or to speak the good news, which is a verbal or communicative activity. To heal or to live out the good news, which is behavioral, that's action. And to oppose evil, which can be both verbal and physical, behavioral, right? Jesus called his apostles to do these four things, and he calls us, his modern-day disciples and emissaries and representatives, to do these four things as well, each of which could warrant its own sermon. But this morning I want to briefly comment on our call to be agents of healing, to be people who speak and do what is good and who speak out against and oppose what is evil and what is not good. Because I think there's a great need for Christians in our community to be doing those things right now. Right now we need to be agents of healing right here in the Tri-Cities. As Richland High and WSU continue to grieve the loss of two students to despair. Nationally, some of you know that there was another school shooting in Kentucky this past week. Two students were killed, 18 more injured. And from what I understand, this was the 11th school shooting this year, and we're not out of January yet. There is a great need for people who call themselves Christians in America to be agents of healing. 
and to speak words of grace and also to speak words of truth because we need to be able to be people who can speak out and say we cannot continue to lose this many students to despair, this many young people to despair. And we cannot continue to allow so many young people to die in our schools. That is not good. And it is not of God. And we need to lament that. And we move, need to move forward and figure out how to do that. And I understand that Christians, devoted followers of Jesus, may disagree about how best to move forward, how best to address these issues, how best to go about addressing these issues. But that means we just have to be even more intentional, even more intentional about studying God's word and praying for God's guidance and learning and understanding what's going on in our communities. We've got to be willing to do that. And elders and deacons, I want you especially to remember that. I also want you to remember this. You will not always or even ever be working solely alongside other people who think and talk and look like you do. Twelve apostles did not have that luxury, and neither will you. Listen to verses 16 through 19. These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. To them he gave the name Boanerges, which means sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. What can we say about these men? First thing we can say is that we know very little about some of them, and that's significant, because it means they were ordinary men. Jesus calls and uses ordinary people whose names may never appear in the history books. You may feel like an ordinary person. You may actually be an ordinary person. God calls you anyway, and God will equip you. The second thing we can say about these men is that they were a rather diverse bunch. Think about it. There's Peter. Peter often acted and spoke without thinking. He was not the most stable of young men, despite the fact that Jesus gave him a name which means rock. Jesus did named him the rock, but Peter often did not act like a rock. He also denied Jesus three times, so there's that. Then we've got James and his brother John. If the twelve apostles were Jesus' inner circle, James and John and Peter were Jesus' inner inner circle. And what were James and John nicknamed? Sons of Thunder! which may mean that they were a little hot-tempered or perhaps just loud-mouthed. Not quite sure. Then there's Matthew. Other scripture passages tell us that Matthew was a tax collector. He was a sellout to the Roman government. And Jesus called him along with Simon the Zealot, who was likely a hyper-Jewish nationalist committed to holy war against Rome. Can we say different sides of the political aisle? Just a little bit. And then may we never forget there's Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. He's in the lineup too. We live in a very polarized era. Politically, socially, economically. The rise of social media has contributed to that polarization. It is easier than ever for us to silo ourselves, to only interact with a small, like-minded group of people. But friends, when I open my Bible and read what Jesus said and Jesus did, I don't see a Savior who was into siloing. 
And I don't think he wants his community, the church, to be a siloed community either. And elders and deacons, I want you especially to remember that because you will serve with people who have different opinions than you do. And your job is not to hold on to your opinions, but to place them before God and ask, Lord, what do you want us to do? And that's hard, but it can be amazing. Finally, I'll say this. Jesus called the 12 to the adventure of their lives. Twelve apostles could never have known just where their calling would lead them when they first responded to Jesus' summons. And neither can we, and that's okay. We don't have to know. We just have to follow Jesus one day, one step at a time, and Jesus will show us the way. The way might not be straight, but he will show us the way. Today I want to encourage all of you, and especially our elders and deacons, to be open to where Jesus may be leading this church this year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to a time this morning to have our offering, we're going to read from Deuteronomy 26, 9 through 11. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. Would the ushers please come forward? Lead me to the cross 
where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Believe me. Will you join me in prayer? Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to give back to you some of what you provide us. Thank you for providing for all of us in many ways. Let us now use your funds wisely to better your kingdom. Help us to wisely support our local church, missions, and our outreach so we may serve others. In your precious name we pray, amen. We forgot to tell you we weren't doing the doxology. I'm sorry. <laughs> A moment of silence for the offering. Thank you. <laughs> it's a little awkward. In just a few moments, we will be ordaining and installing our new elders and deacons. Before we do so, hear these words. We are all called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as elders, and as ministers of the word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Sylvia, will you come up? And will all of those being ordained and installed please come forward as well? Um, and even if you weren't nominated today, but you have yet to be installed, come down too. On behalf of the session, I present for installation as elder, Janie Easton, Tom Westerman, and Mark Miller. And for ordination and installation as deacon, Karen Balzar, Pat Fisher, Brenda Palethian, and Joyce Rodman. We have some questions, so turn this way and look at me, and I'm going to ask you the ordination question. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal, and God's word to you? If so, say, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, say, I do and I will. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ? under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions, if so, say, I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit, if so, say, I will. 
will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, say, I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so, say, I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, say, I will. Deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I will. Will you be a faithful elder watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. Question for the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept Janie Easton, Mark Miller, Tom Westerman, Karen Belzer, Pat Fisher, Brenda Pellison, Joyce Rodman, and Julie Epperly as ruling elders and deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Do we? We do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? Do we? We do. It's my favorite part. We're going to ask you to come forward and kind of smush in. And those of you who have already been ordained and served as elders and deacons in this church, would you come forward? Um, if you're not able to come forward, just reach out a hand. And, you know, the Holy Spirit will connect you that way. But come on down, and we're going to lay hands on these new elders and deacons and bestow upon them that blessing. I'm wearing my red stole because that's the color of ordination. Now, sometimes it gets a little hot. That's why there's flames on here. <laughs> but it's also a blessing, and the Holy Spirit, we believe, will empower you and encourage you in this ministry. So let us come and pray together. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servants whom you called through baptism as your own and marked as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Jesus Christ. Give them a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Give them the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give to your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, and courage and an abiding sense of your presence. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church, that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain this congregation and ministry. Ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we also pray for those who are sick this day. We pray for Yvonne Towner. We pray for good news to come from biopsies. Lord, we pray for benign tumors. We have praises for a great heart rehab report. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. We pray for Marianne and her open heart surgery. We pray for safe travels for all those who are traveling. Lord, we pray for Eric Frank that as he goes for his surgery tomorrow that he would know your presence. Bless Monique and the children and give them your peace in the midst of this anxiety-producing surgery. But Lord, we trust that he's in your hands and you are faithful. We pray for the Janicek and Swenson family right now. Would you bless Frankie's uncle and heal him from this infection? And Lord, bless Link as he is awaiting surgery as well. Lord, we pray that you would be with us in all that we face and all that we do. We would know your mercy. And we pray this prayer that you taught your disciples to pray with boldness. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, you are now deacons and elders in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. And thank you for your service. Amen. Thank you. Thanks. Would you stand as we sing together, God of Wonders? Lord of all creation. this morning. And as soon as we have finished this part, we will reconvene in First Pres Center. So go ahead and get in line and get some lunch. Remember, it's a fundraiser for Boy Scouts, but we'll still feed you for free. <laughs> so if you don't have a couple bucks, that's okay. Um, eat anyway. And then we will continue with our meeting once everyone has been served. So let us join People of God, you were set apart even before you came into being. Go out into the world this week, sharing God's love with all people in Jesus' name. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God of wonders beyond our doubt. 